Okay, hi everybody. This video is to help quickly memorize the unit circle. Unit circles used in trigonometry. Um, unit circle stands for a circle of radius one. And those of you that are in trig, you see the circle always represented where the center of the circle is at the origin of the x and the y axis. And the radius is one, which means the distance from the center to any end is one. So this distance is one, this distance is one, this distance is one, this distance is one, and so on and so forth. Now, when you're dealing with the unit circle, there are special angles. This should be straight. There are special angles that we talk about. Now, I always suggest that memorizing quadrant number one will help you with the rest of the quadrants in the unit circle and then these angles on the axes are easier to determine just based on the fact that we know the radius is one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start first by the angles, memorizing the angles. And you'll have to memorize at least the first quadrant, the 30 degree, the 45 degree, and the 60 degree. Now you, you know that you're representing your angles in not only degrees but also in radians and every angle that I write is always an angle starting here moving counterclockwise so this is a 30 degree angle this is a 45 degree angle 60 degree angle always from the positive horizontal axis radians always have pi on top right our radian angles and <clears throat> for the 60 and the 30 a lot of times those two get confused but um, I just say switch them out Flip them. So, for example, the 30 degree angle in radians is pi over three. Sorry, pi over six. So, in other words, they're switched. And the 60 degree angle has a radian angle of pi over three. So, 30 degrees has a radian of six in the denominator, and the 60 degree angle has a radian of three in the denominator. 45 degrees pi over four is our radian angle. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and talk about the angles in the second quadrant as well. Okay, I'll talk about the points in a second. Now, I hope that everybody knows that this angle here is 180 degrees, which is half of a full revolution, half of a full circle, um, starting here, ending here, and in radians is represented by pi. So the amount always from the horizontal to any angle, at least the first one, is always 30 degrees. So from here to here is 30 degrees. Well, 180 minus 30 degrees is 150. So this angle here is 150 degrees. If you notice, the amount, the, 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 the amount that is the difference between each of these angles is 15 degrees. So once I write this one, the next one is 15 degrees less than that, 135 degrees. The next one here is 15 degrees less than that. 120 degrees. So these are my angles in quadrant two in degrees. Now radians. You guys always know that we have a pi, right, in our fraction to represent our angle in radians. Now remember that the 30 degree always had a denominator of six. So this one was 30 degrees from 180, so it's going to have a denominator of six, which means that this one is going to have a denominator of three. Notice that the one furthest away from the horizontal always has a denominator of 3. This one is going to have a denominator of 4. Now, the trick here is that the number on top of the radian angles is always one less than the denominator. So this angle in radians would be 5 pi over 6. 5 is one less than 6. This radian angle would be 3 pi over 4. 3 is one less than 4. This radian angle is 2 pi over 3. 2 is 1 less than 3. And I have my angles in quadrant 2. So let's go into quadrant 3 now. Just with the angles. I'm not even doing the terminal points yet. Same idea. This amount from here to here is 30 degrees. But now I'm going past 180 degrees. So I'm adding 30 to 180. So I have 180 plus 30 or 210 degrees. Again, the amount, the difference between each of these angles is 15 degrees. So I'm going to add 15 to get to this one, 225 degrees. I'm going to add 15 to this one, 240 degrees. Okay? Now let's talk about the radian. 
the angle closest to the horizontal is going to have a denominator of 6, and the angle furthest from the horizontal is going to have a denominator of 3, and the middle one, again, is always going to have a denominator of 4. My radian angles always have a pi, and here's the trick in quadrant 3. The radian angle has a numerator that is 1 greater than the denominator. So this is 7 pi over 6. 7 is 1 more than 6. This is 5 pi over 4. 5 is 1 more than 4. This is 4 pi over 3. 4 is 1 more than 3. And I have my angles in quadrant 3. Last but not least, we have our angles in quadrant 4. Same exact idea. One full revolution, remember, one full circle is 360 degrees. And radians is 2 pi. So this is the starting point, 0 degrees or 0 radians. And if I come back to that point, if I come back to this case, a full circle, I'm doing 360 degrees or what we call 2 pi radians. So again, the distance from here to here, the amount and angle in degree form is 30 degrees. Now, I'm taking away from 360 because I'm not hitting 360 yet. So 360 minus 30 is 330. Again, the difference between each of these angles is 15. So I'm going to subtract 15 to go here, 315. Subtract 15 to go here, 300. Again, my radian angles have a denominator of, for the furthest one, a denominator of 3. And for the closest one, a denominator of 6. Same thing. Middle one has a denominator of 4. And I always have a pi a pi, and a pi. The trick in quadrant 4 for the radian angle is the numerator is 1 less than twice the denominator. So what I mean by that is this one is 11 pi over 6. Ha uh, twice 6, or 6 times 2 is 12, and 1 less than that is 11. 4 times 2 is 8, 1 less than that is 7. 3 times 2 is 6, and one less than that is five. So I have all of my angles in each quadrant, and I actually have my angles here and here. The only angles that I'm missing are the ones right here and down here. So from my positive horizontal, if I do one fourth of my full circle, I'm doing 90 degrees. And in radians, that's my pi over two. And if I continue all the way over here, three fourths of a full, full circle, that's my 270 degrees, 180 plus 90, or my 3 pi over 2. And that's all my angles in my unit circle, OK? Now, we all know that that's not all that we need to, to memorize or we need to know. That's the trick to remember the angles and the, um, the angles and degrees and radians. And I always suggest to everyone that you create the unit circle at least five times. You're going to start seeing the same angles over and over again, the same numbers over and over again, it's going to help you memorize it. Now, let's talk about these terminal points. Every single angle on my unit circle, right, has a point located on the circle in the x and the y system. So this point has an x-coordinate of something and a y-coordinate of something in quadrant 1. This has an x-coordinate of something and a y-coordinate of something in quadrant 2. So every single angle has an ordered pair corresponding to that angle. Every single angle, you go up here and down here, okay? Now let's start with the harder ones. Okay, the harder ones are the ones that lie inside the quadrants. So here's the trick, okay? We're always starting with the left, the x-coordinates, okay? And I'm always starting at the, the, the angle that's furthest away from the x-axis. So I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1. These are all my numerators of each of these fractions representing the um, ordered pairs. Every single denominator has 2. And then I take the square root of every single numerator. The square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 3, square root, square root square root, and the square root of 1 is 1, so I leave it. 
these are my terminal points that correspond to these angles in quadrant one. And again, once I know quadrant one, I know the rest. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm looking at the x coordinates, the left side of each of these points. I'm starting at the angle that is furthest away from the horizontal, and I'm counting one, two, three, and then three, two, one. I'm going to divide everything by two. All these denominators are two. And I'm going to square root, square root, square root all of my numerators. Now, because I'm in quadrant two, which coordinate is negative? All of my x coordinates are negative so that these points lie in quadrant two. So to get to this point here, for example, I have to go from the center, negative square root of three over two, and then up one half. They're points on a, on a rectangular coordinate system. To get these guys in quadrant three, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna start at the one furthest away, the angle furthest away from the horizontal. I'm looking at the x coordinates, and I'm going one, two, three, three, two, one, dividing everything by two. And then square rooting all of my numerators. I'm in quadrant three, which means that both of my x and my y coordinates are negative. Same thing in quadrant four for these three special cases. I'm looking at the x coordinates. I'm starting with the angle that's furthest away from the x axis, and I'm counting one, two, three, three, two, one. I'm dividing everything by two, divide by two, divide by two, and I'm square rooting all of my numerators again. Now, because I'm in quadrant four, all of my y coordinates are negative. So I'm almost done with this. Last but not least are these special cases that lie on the axes. Well, this is called an x-intercept, is it not? It's a, it's a point right, along the x-axis. And how far did I say that this point was from the center? I said it was one unit because it's a unit circle. The radius is one. So if I'm going from the center of a circle, the center of the x and y axes, one unit to the right, my x-coordinate would be 1, my y-coordinate would be 0. If I'm moving from the center to this point, again, the distance from the center to an end is 1. I'm moving to the left along the x-axis. So I'm going in the negative x-direction, so my x-coordinate would be negative 1, and my y-coordinate would be 0. This point up here, I'm moving along the y-axis, the positive y-axis. The distance from the center to the top is one unit. I'm going up the y-axis, so it's a y-intercept, which means that my x-coordinate is zero and my y-coordinate is one. Down here, again, this distance from here to here is one because it's a unit circle. It's just very zoomed in. If this distance is one, I'm going in the negative y-direction then the point down here would be 0, negative 1. And there is my unit circle. Again, it is highly suggested that you create this at least five times so that you can start to memorize it where you don't have to write it every time because as you get further and further into trig and maybe calculus, if you guys end up taking that, you're going to want to know this very quick, very fast, like the back of your hand. Any suggestions? Go ahead and leave me a comment, helpmeprofessorj.com. You guys can email me, helpmeprofessorj at gmail.com if you have any questions, if you have any suggestions for other videos, any more details that you guys need, I can create that for you. Just let me know. All right? Till next time.